What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back to the Madden 20 Ratings Prediction Series, where today we are taking a look at the Indianapolis Colts, who have been cursed. If you've watched any of the rebuilds over the last three years, they've been one of the cursed franchises, I think coming into Madden 20, they're going to be one of the top rebuild rosters, just because they are so close, they just need that little push, that little nudge over the edge to make them a truly elite team, and they have some extraordinary players that are well within their prime that make them very intriguing to you. So let's take a look here at how I think the roster is going to shape up in Madden 20. Starting at the quarterback spot, Andrew Luck. I'm giving him an 89 overall. I think he's like right there at like number five if you're raking your top five quarterbacks. Last year, 4,600 passing yards, 39 touchdowns to 15 picks. Still a little turnover prone, which is a little bit worrying. But I mean, it was his first year back after a very, very serious shoulder surgery. Um, I think like he's, he's like right in that debate. Is, is he an elite quarterback or not? Like, he's like the not meme Joe Flacco is the elite. You know what I'm saying? Because Andrew Luck is, you know, from a talent standpoint, impeccable. He just, I just think he needs to cut the turnovers down just a little bit uh, to, to really reach that elite status. But still, from a bad standpoint, uh, he's 29, should hold on to his rating fairly well. As well as when you take this team over to rebuild, you're going to have a nice little trading piece here in Jacoby Brissett. You probably should be able to get a nice little ransom for trading him to a QB starved team. Jumping to the backfield, we have Marlon Mack. We're going to give him an 82 overall, over 1,000 yards from scrimmage last year, and 10 total touchdowns. Uh, needs to show a little bit more consistency, but I think he might be the lead dog in that backfield next season. They brought in Spencer Ware's a 78. Naheem Hines, a very nice receiving weapon out of the backfield. We give him a 76 after 400, um, sorry, 700 yards from scrimmage and four touchdowns last season. Uh, in the second, in the wide receivers, we have T.Y. Hilton. We're giving him a 91 overall last season, 76 catches, almost 1,300 yards, and six total touchdowns. Uh, great, great chemistry with Andrew Locke. Still at, you know, get up there in age a little bit. Still one of the better deep threats in the National Football League. One of the more surprising moves was the Colts bringing in Devin Funches. I mean, you know, sure, there's some potential there for him to finally, you know, start to put it all together. But I just, in terms of the contract they gave him, like, it's like $10 million. For a guy that's done nothing, struggles to get separation pretty damn bad. So we're going to give him a 79, see if he can turn around. In terms of overpowered weapons, though, we have Paris Campbell, who, again, I think his rating is going to be roughly this, maybe a couple points more because his speed's all messed up. That's why I'm not releasing these rosters because they're not really mine. He should be at 94, I think probably 94, 95, somewhere in that territory with that 4-3 speed. 73 overall is going to be very, very overpowered, especially on streaks. At tight end, we have Eric Ebron, who we're going to give an 88 overall last season. 66 catches, 750 yards, 14 touchdowns for Eric Ebron. I mean, there is a little bit of worry of the one-year wonder, but he was a really, really talented first-round pick out of North Carolina. Struggled to find any sort of rhythm with the Lions, and now he's starting to put it all together. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he's just turning it all around. Him along with Jack Doyle, who's an 83 grid zone, very well from Pro Football Focus, one of the best blocking tight ends in the league. Uh, you have to argue that they might have, you know, I think along with, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, right at the top of my head, one of the best tight end rooms in the National Football League. Uh, Costanzo, uh, their offensive line is very nice. Costanzo's getting an 83. Uh, Quentin Nelson, highest rating for, actually, no, behind Saquon Barkley. He gets an 87. Ryan Kelly, 84. Glowinski, 78. And Braden Smith, 81. Jumping to the defensive side, we have Jabal Sheard, who we're going to give an 84 overall. Last season, five and a half sacks, 14 TFLs. For a very productive edge rusher that there was some concerns if he's gonna be able to make that transition from a 3-4 outside linebacker to a 4-3 end and he you know pretty much proved that yeah he's a pretty damn good player at right defensive end Kimiko, Kimoko Ture is getting a 78 I think he had like four or five sacks last season nice little promising season for the rookie out of Rutgers entering his sophomore year we at the inside this is where they got a lot of production this is you know this is why so many people are padding uh, Ballard, the GM on the back, because he's finding diamonds in the rough that can get in really good production on them. Danico Autry, we're going to give him an 83 overall. Nine sacks, 13 TFLs last year. Uh, it's like a defensive end. The tackle kind of played a little bit like um, like Michael Bennett for the Philadelphia Eagles. I, you know, probably should be classified more as a defensive end, but you know, he, he plays all over that defensive line. Then we have Marcus Hunt, who we're going to give an 81 overall. Five sacks, 13 TFLs last year. Bounced around after kind of being a little bit of a bust for the Cincinnati Bengals and finding a you know late career resurgence with the Indianapolis Colts. Left outside linebacker Darius Leonard, my adopted son, my boy. We're giving him an 88 overall, which I think is the second highest rating for a player entering their second year just behind Saquon who he gave a 90. Darius Leonard at, you know as good of a season I've ever I've ever seen a rookie linebacker have. Here's Darius Leonard. 163 tackles, two interceptions, eight pass breakups, four forced fumbles, seven sacks, 12 TFLs. 
So while in reality his weakness is pass coverage because he's not a tremendous athlete, he still was able to get picks and pass deflections to break up plays and be disruptive. It's ridiculous, man. He's getting an 88. His rating is going to be off the charts. I wonder if he's going to get a superstar X Factor. I personally would give it to him. Uh, ben Banigou is actually going to be a really intriguing rookie, too, for the Colts. Really, really good athlete. Uh, Anthony Walker, we're giving him a 77. He had 105 tackles, 10 TFLs last year. Um, right outside linebacker, Justin Houston, coming from the Kansas City Chiefs. Still holding on to an 88, one of the best edge rushers. Hopefully, he can stay healthy for a full 16 games. If he does so, definitely going to get double digit sacks there for the Colts. Um, We'll say we'll be interesting if he's going to stay at linebacker, go to defensive end. That's definitely something to watch. I think if I'm the Colts, if I had a Justin Houston, I would play him at 4-3. There's a chance that he might actually be playing defensive end and committed to playing defensive end. But we just kept him at linebacker here for these rosters. In the secondary, Pierre Desir, pro football focused darling. Another one of these diamonds in the rough. Uh, I think he was like the number 15 or 14 rated corner for pro football focus. So we'll give him an 80 overall. Kenny Moore, now the highest paid slot corner in the National Football League. He was actually really, really good. I remember anytime I watched the Colts play, he was the guy that was the most impressive on the defensive for me. Uh, so we're going to give him a 79 overall. Three interceptions, 11 pass breakups, 77 tackles, four TFLs last season. Definitely trending in the right direction. Get my boy Quincy Wilson from Florida. Rock Yassin, the rookie from Temple. I think he will get a very nice rating. A uh, great young secondary here for the Colts. At free safety, Malik Hooker is getting an 84 overall. Last season, two interceptions, 44 tackles. Graded out very well from Pro Football Focus. And at strong safety, Clayton Gaylers. We're going to give him a 79 overall. 89 tackles. Some of the most tackles for a safety in the league. Lots of depth, though. Farley and Kindred could be nice little trade pieces if you chose the Colts as your franchise team. Vinatieri, the ageless wonder, is getting an 80. And Rigoberto Sanchez with a 76. So there you go, guys. Those are my Madden 20 ratings predictions for the Indianapolis Colts. As always, if you agree or disagree with any of the ratings you saw today, let me know in the comment section below. If it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4. Say peace out.